Hi, I'm Asenta. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I'm going to be doing a spooky book haul, which was very hard for me to put together because there are too many books that I read or that are in general that are like paranormal or horror stories so i picked the top nine the top nine books so happy spooky season i am wearing a costume you can't really tell but i will put up a picture of the of how i looked last year i believe i dressed up with my little sister she wanted to be a ninja turtle we were the girl versions so i was the girl version of Raphael. let's get into this video and first things first i actually want to say thank you to my friend who kind of was like hey i thought you were gonna do this this video. Thank you, B. I appreciate you so much. So I divided it down into two piles. Those two piles are hardcover books and paperback books. The first one on top of the pile that is the smallest and probably my favorite possession to this date is the villain novel all about the Disney villains who I love and it's just this book is like facts about them what they did it's also got like art my favorite one actually she's not my favorite villain but just her answers are so funny to me trying to determine who is the evil of all the villains in the disney universe i skin it at the book fair for my little brother and sister i had to pick it up because i needed it to my collection there's their portraits on the back if i ever do go to disneyland during halloween i'm going to take this book and i'm gonna actually have the villain sign it so that was my reasoning behind getting this book i am super excited to just have it in my collection and just marvel at the art pieces that are inside of it the book is grim lovelies was recommended this book by emma books who's another booktober i also just started reading it yesterday so i'm only nine pages into the book but so far it's really good and from what i take away from it it's like a magical book where there's witches and warlocks this book is following a 17 year old anuk who arrives in the human world where people known as the pretties lavish fast cars high fashion on themselves and have the freedom to fall in love but anuk can never find never had those things because she's not really human enchanted from animal to human girl and forbidden to venture beyond Beyond her familiar artisan prison. Anouk is a beastie destined for a life surrounded by dust bunnies and cinders, serving Mada Vitora, the evil witch who spelled her into existence. That is until one day she finds her mistress murdered in a pool of blood and Anouk is accused of the crime. Now the world she's always dreamed of is rife with danger, pursued through Paris by the underground magical society known as the Hot Anouk and her fellow beasties have only three days to find the real killer before the spell, keeping them a human fades away. If they fail, they will lose their only lives that they've ever known, but if they succeed, they could be more powerful than anyone ever bargained for. I don't think I've ever read a book about witches and warlocks. Don't come for me. I haven't read Harry Potter but I do have the books. This is kind of my first dip into the magic world. I can't complain. So far the cover art is just amazing and beautiful. I'm pretty happy with this purchase. The last hard book that I have today it is a big anthology of all things horror, paranormal, and suspense. Great thrillers. It has all the books that I love that are very near dear to my heart but I just don't have the money or time to buy it so somebody this somebody is Stephen I cannot pronounce his last name so Stephen was the one that picks up 101 suspenseful stories put them all together this includes mysteries this includes horror paranormal you name it there's poems in here and on the back it actually tells you the authors that are in the book in this book we have E.F. Benson we have Ambrose Pierce we have Allegron Black we have Stephen and Crane, we have Arthur Conan Doyle, we have Maurice Level, we have Jack London, we have Guy de Mepoussien, we have Edgar Allan Poe, there's Saki in here, Robot Lewis Stevenson, Bram Stoker, H. G. Wells and a lot of others and it's basically just like an anthology little pieces of the stories. I want to be more cultured and more versed in a lot of the suspense suspenseful mystery novels because I eventually want to write a suspenseful horror paranormal whatever novel. I can read this book so many times and come across multiple stories. I can never become bored of this book. The cover itself just drew me in so I had to pick it up because there was a bloody hand on the 
cover. It's great if you don't really have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of time to go to bookstores because there's so many authors in here. There's 101 stories that you could choose from and you can also read at your own pace. You can jump around because the stories aren't linear. It's separate stories that are put into this one book. So it's amazing. It's a really good read. If you want something spooky to scare you at night, these stories will definitely do it for you. Moving on to the paperback covers of this haul, I have six. So this is the bulk of this book haul. And the first one on the top is World War Z by Max Brooks. I love this movie. This movie is probably on the top two of my zombie book movies adaptations that I love. It's kind of like the prequel to the movie. If you have seen the movie where it's like a zombie apocalypse, Brad Pitt plays in it. I remember going to the movies to watch this with my mom and she got incredibly terrified. So I forced her to buy this book for me and the movie actually came out in 2013. So that's not that long ago. That was actually five years ago, but this book has been around for a long time. At that time, I was kind of like going through a zombie phase, which I never really got out of, but that's when my zombie hype started coming about. This book follows the journey and basically how the first person who got infected by the zombie virus at the end, and the book they're called Zeke's, which they kind of reference in the movie. They are like, the Zeke's, you know, they can hear you, you gotta be quiet. This book, it was mostly following not the main character in the movie, but it was following another person. They were kind of describing the days leading up to the zombie apocalypse happening and then there was kind of like a reality show that happened in the middle of the story that had to do with all the celebrities and like it was the end of the world. The narrator does an extremely good job of including everything into the movie and just tying it all together. I think me reading this story you like actually tied everything together because I wanted to know so much more about the story. I wanted to know how it all started and by the grace of the angels I found the first I found a book and I'm not sure if there's more to the series. Um, I hope there is. The real reason I actually forced my mom to pick it up because at the time when the movie came out, so five years ago, I wanted to write my own zombie apocalypse, post-apocalypse world. Of course, all the books that I'm going to be mentioning are kind of like me building my reference so I know, okay, this is what has been done and then this is what I can do. This is probably my favorite part in the book. I don't know, it really inspired me to write my book. That is no longer in print so there's no point in me. The other book that I have is Plague Island. I just picked this book up probably about two weeks ago. Three weeks ago I, I picked up this book. I really wanted another zombie book to add to my collection. I love zombie books. I am kind of in the phase. Fascinating to me to see how different authors write about apocalypse and how zombies are like how the world ends. I don't know why. Um, It's not like I fantasize about it. Plague Island. This story is about a zombie apocalypse outbreak that happens in Africa. Obviously, I bought this book from Target. It's still new. The books are not frayed or I'm excited to read this. This is my next book that I'm actually going to be reading today. The other book I have is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Duff. This is your basic another apocalypse based book except this has to do with the vampire virus spreading throughout the humans and this is basically a world where humans and the vampires can coexist in a world together. Holly Black really does execute the story pretty well. There are designated areas where the vampires can be and where humans can actually go into the vampire world, coexist with them, and then there are other towns. The vampire towns are called Cold Town. At the beginning of the book, we meet this girl by the name of Tana. She is basically waking up from this massive party that she had with her friends at one of their houses. She wakes up and she's of course drunk. She goes outside to see her friends and she sees nothing but a bloodbath. I've read it about eight times now since the first time I bought it. The way that it's written, I enjoy it very well and I love Holly Black as an author. I wish, like, I want to buy all of her books because she's just a very strong author. Ooh, getting down to the last of the pie. So I have the Children of Eden series by Joey Graceffa. He is also a YouTuber. This is kind of 
like the awesome, not really a post-apocalyptic, but it's like dystopian world where the world is kind of set into sectors, kind of like the Hunger Games, but not as drastic as the Hunger Games, set into sectors and each family can only have one child because the world is low on resources, so they don't really have a lot of resources to feed everybody. And I have to commend Joey because these books are amazing and my heart broke at the end of this book elite of eden which is the sequel to children of eden he does an amazing job at he executed the characters extremely well the story i didn't feel like there was any stalling point they were very suspenseful and left me on the edge of my seat for dystopian worlds it is very easy to stray from your main storyline and i feel i don't feel like he did these in either of the books just know that some some ish goes down with these books the last book is Haunted in Hollywood by Loie Lane. She is another YouTuber on here. She tells paranormal stories. She reads viral scary stories on YouTube. This book is basically not really an autobiography, but it's, I don't know what the word is. My brain isn't working. It's a fantasized autobiography based off of her life. The main character is Loie Lane, who is going to Hollywood for her first photo shoot as a model. There she is staying at the Spooky Roosevelt Hotel. She is also staying in Marilyn Monroe's suite or bungalow by the poolside. Some terrifying paranormal stuff goes down. The book was overall well written. I think if you were to watch her videos, you would kind of get the kind of personality that she is. Throughout the whole entire book, that's kind of what she was. She went into some scenes and some chapters of the book where she was live tweeting what was going on in the investigation. I really wish there was a second book to it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much if you stayed here this long. I will talk to you as soon as I can. Bye!